Yeah, Fraser's gone. Um, I mean, Tony, I think is, is Tony's gone, I'm not quite sure, but I can remember Tony telling me things about uh, about my vicar. Um, he said, we've got to sort it out, mate, when he come out, mate. I went, well, I'll come and see you. So he gave me his address and everything like that, yeah. Uh, I I still had a long time to do, really. So uh, anyway, you know, it's like everyone, everyone gives you their address and you don't you do take a notice, OK, I'll come and see you, but you know it's going to not be like it was when you was in prison. But anyway, I'm in Charles' prison still. Uh, it's about March, something like that, February, March. And uh, I'm down the gym. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm working out with a, a few people. Uh, Mickey Lawrence, uh, it's a few of us in there having a good workout. Uh, and Jimmy Tibbet, the old man, is down, down the bottom having a workout with his son. Uh, there's a few people, there's Kenny Beagle uh, uh, there. And there's a few people down on the floor. Everybody's just having a workout, you know. A few people are doing a, a load of sit-ups and press-ups and all that sort of thing. I'm on the stage doing my weights, yeah. All of a sudden the lights go out, yeah. And you think, oh, what's going on here? And because the lights go out, we start seeing smoke, you know. What the fuck's going on? And it was like, we thought, uh, what, what, hold up. We thought, there's a, we thought there was like a fire, a little fire somewhere in, in the gym. And the light, everywhere, everywhere light went out, everywhere. It was pitch black in there, and it, of course, bang. They push the alarm button, all the screws come rushing in, and, and, and they're telling us we've got to go out, we've got to get out, we've got to get out the, uh, out the uh, gym. Uh, the prison uh, is, is on fire, and it's in, in the centre, yeah? It's the centre where the chapel is. It's in the centre, and um, where the chapel is, it branches off to the, to the, uh, to the uh, sex offenders' nonsense, nonsense wing, and the block, and the block is downstairs. We're downstairs. All of a sudden, fucking hell, what's going on there? So we're going, going down the uh, going down the pathway. You got uh, you got a sort of like the wings one side, and you got a, 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 a sort of like admin block the other side. Yeah. So you're walking through down the path. You have got all these uh, these sex offenders up there. Says, Please let us get out. Let us get out. Going fucking burn, burn. You know what I mean? Shout out, burn, burn. No, all of a sudden we walked into the, uh, the centre, and it's a light, mate. It's a light. The centre's a light. You know what I mean? You can hear the crackling, crack, crack. It's a light. What the fuck's going on here? And we had, we, we couldn't go back to our cells. You know where we're going to go. I said you can't go back to your cells. You've got to go back and get our stuff. You can't go back to your cells. You've got to go straight to uh, the visiting room. Right? So here we go, all through, all through to the visit room, everyone's sitting in the visit room going, what the fuck's going on? Also, more and more people started coming in. And then they shipped a lot, they shipped a lot um, out, into the, out into the exercise yards and the, and, the, uh, and the big green at the back. I mean, no one, no one um, in Chelsea Prison even attempted or tried to escape, no one. That's how good the nick was, you know, but no one thought that we were going to get shipped out to other prisons. So it's on the light, now no, it's a light, you can hear it crackling and banging and this, that and the other, the wood and this, that. So they're coming, they're coming in, uh, giving us, as they do, they try to keep you quiet. So they're coming in with sandwiches, uh, the kitchen's a, a, a bit away from, the, from where it is, uh, they're bringing in sandwiches. Uh, sausages, bacon, and all sorts of bread, and all that you can make yourself sandwiches, and you can, you've got lots of sandwiches coming, but you can make yourself your own sandwich and bits of chicken, just trying to keep you calm, yeah. And all of a sudden, uh, the chief walks in uh, with the governor, and he says, "Listen, uh, got some bad news. Uh, someone's someone or something set light to the uh, chapel, and." Uh, it's a, the whole prison is going to is a light. The fire brigade is going to be caught. It's unsafe for anybody to, to to stay here, and you're all going to be shipped out. You're all going to be shipped out to different prisons. Everyone's shouting and screaming because come on, you have got no stuff. All your stuff in your cells. There's people who've got money in their cells, cash. There's people in themselves got other jewelry that they buy from other people in the wings. It's all everything's in their cells, you know. And they're going to find out. They're going to find so much in there because don't forget. They're going to get people from other nicks come in to uh, to go through all the cells and sort the stuff out because it's going to take ages to box everything up. So you can imagine people are going mad like Bender, the tip, everyone, me, the tip, everyone's going crazy because all all your belongings are in your cell. So 
all of a sudden there'd be these big black Mariah things, yeah, but I think it was about six or seven, maybe more, each side. Uh, little cells, little, little tiny little cells, no, tiny, I mean tiny. And the ship puts in there, uh, send a lot of buses out. Well, so we get on the bus, but I'm so big, I'm so big, I can't fit in the cubicle. I'm too big. They, you know, they try to get me in there and I can't get in there. My shoulders won't get in it. My shoulders are too wide to even sit in it. So now, um, what they do, they get a chair uh, and a screw and, and another chair and they handcuff me to the screw, right? And they handcuff the, the, the chair to, his, to the door, where the door is, yeah? I thought, what the fuck is going on here? And all of a sudden they set off. Um, I mean, late at night, you're going, I mean, this is like in the morning, this is like, what, one o'clock in the morning? It's late because they've got to get everything ready. I mean, this is, you're in the gym at about seven, eight o'clock. So by the time I get everything ready, it's like 12, half 12, and now you're on the road, you know? And there's big convoys of police cars and there's lots of birds uh, in terms of prison still, you know what I mean? Especially on our wing, sea wing. And everyone's going mad about their stuff. They've got all the belongings. I mean, come on, it's not fair. You know, we should be able to go to ourselves, but we're not allowed there, yeah? And when he, well, anyway, we, I eventually go to Wandsworth Prison. As everyone goes all around the world, mate. They're going everywhere, everywhere, all different nicks in the country. You know, you can imagine what is about two and a half round of, Found the screws, uh, found the uh, two and a half cons in Chelsea. Maybe not as much as that, but it's, it's a lot of people. So they got to ship them all out. And uh, so I'll go to Wandsworth. Um, I'm the first off the bus because I'm in the middle. Uh, I open the door and there's a chief going mad because I'm not even in the, in the cubicle. The ones are very strict, you know what I mean? And I, go, I jump off the fucking bus and I jump and I fell off the bus and got hold of the chief and felt the shut trod on his toes. He's going crazy. Um, put me aside, all the screws, they put me one side, all the others get out, we'll grab him others. Then we go to reception to get our kits and then they've got to, we've got to take all our clothes off, our civic clothes and get into ones of clothes. Everybody's really pissed off now, you can, you can imagine, can't you? You know, we've got to get into ones of clothes and, and you know, it's not fair, mate, it's not fair. Anyway, so I'll go in there and there's a couple of guys that, that we know from, from way back in, in, in prisons and I'm getting stripped off and they can't believe the size of me, mate. They're going, fucking hell, mate. Look at the size of you, mate. You know what I mean? They're massive. And I couldn't get a shirt to fit me. The, sh the shirts were too tight on the shoulders, too small on the wrists, and tight as anything on the arms. And massive arms, 22-inch arms, you know. Big, massive shoulders, really, really big. And they couldn't get a shirt. So what happened? They got this shirt was about, must have been made for the fattest geezer in the world. It fitted me, yeah? But I couldn't do the wrist up. I still couldn't do the wrist up. My arms were tight on it, yeah? But it fitted me around the top part of it, yeah? So anyway, you get your trousers, your jeans, everyone's, you know, we're all asking for the best they've got. They've got to give us the best. I mean, they're shitting themselves in that, in, in ones of, at that, they really are crapping themselves because there's people there who've done lots of birds that don't care a fuck about the system, don't care about ones of what they can do because we're all, we're all big time long-termers. We know the score. We ain't listening to their crap. Anyway, we get what we got to get. I go to, uh, I think it's A-Wing, C, I'm not quite sure, being a -wing. No, it's got to be seen because I'm looking over the yard. I'm looking over the yard. Anyway. So we're there. I go upstairs. To, I think it is the freeze. Uh, they put me in a cell with another guy. I go in there. The geese crap itself and it sees me walking in the cell. I'm, I'm huge, in it? Anyway, so all I want to do now is get in bed and go to sleep, yeah? So when I come out, when we eventually come out of the cell in the morning, I'm not joking. They, no, before... Before I go into my cell, there's murders. Everybody's kicking off, yeah? Because they're putting them in cells that have got three people in, you know, and they're kicking off. They just come out of single cells. They're kicking off. They got all, they, they're chucking out beds through the door, tables, chairs, piss pots, everything's going out. Everybody, all the screws are running around. They've got, I've just asked for lots of screws to come in to control it. We're going mad. 
They're going mad, people, chucking this and chucking that. I mean, come on, you can remember, listen, people have been in a single cell, some of these, for 10, 12 years. You know what I mean? Maybe 15 years, you know. Corey Fraser have been there, they've been kicked right off, I should imagine. But anyway, you know, they're chucking all these things over the landing. All the bells are going, screams, all the screams. They had no gates at the end, so anybody could run across the centre then. And they're going mad, there's been so much shit going on. Anyway, they come up to where I am, I'm leaning on the landing, they get him and bang the door. In the morning, there's pan, listen mate, in the morning there's murders. There's all stuff in the nets, they're not looking, they're, uh, they're controlled and looking, yeah? Only so many people are getting unlocked at a time. Everyone's going, honestly, everybody's going crazy, going absolute bomb bombs. There's fucking murders in there, mate. And all of a sudden, my door opens up, go on, go and get your, go and get your water. I said, who are you talking to, mate? I said, behave yourself, I know what I've got to do. You know, they're shouting their mouths about, oh, shut your mouth, you. We ain't interested, don't give a fuck about you people, you know what I mean? We don't care. I'm not bothered about what they do. We, we, you know, I've done plenty, I'm not bothered. Anyway, they're, they're, I'm walking down, I'm walking down my, uh, the land just with a t-shirt on, a vest on. They go, put it out, fuck off. Um, no one gives the monkeys, mate. We'll be, they want to get rid of us, mate. They don't want us in, in the nick. They don't want us to control them, the prison in a way, you know what I mean? They, they can't control, they can't control a hundred of us, that's not, that's come all long term, it's done 10, 12, 15 years, you know, they don't want it. So anyway, i am got my vest, my, my, I think I've got a vest on, a t-shirt, I'm walking down. You're supposed to put shirts on, all that shit, yeah, but fuck all that. I'm walking down, all of a sudden, about three screws uh, come rushing down the landing, um, Got all of them in, pushed me, pushed me in, in a cell, and they went, oh, well, listen, mate, he said, no problem, no problem. He said, what are you on, what, what, what are you on, steroids? And where did this come from? I said, we just come from Chelsea, Governor. He went, yeah, yeah, he said, well, everybody's talking about you and this, that, and the other, you know, but all the guys in Chelsea, not just about you, but everybody, yeah. He said, but we want to know this, how you got as big as what you got, you're massive, mate. I said, listen, I don't take no drugs, mate, all I take is yeast. Yeast, baker's yeast, that's all I take. And they're going, great, is that, mate? And, I mean, then, I mean, Roy's then was about, about but it wasn't that about that much, you know what I mean? But Roy's couldn't get Roy's in them days in prison. He could have done, but, I mean, we never got nothing like that. It was just the yeast. And training all the time, regular training, big heavy weights and big bits of wood. Crash, crash. So anyway, my door open, I'll go down for a, a breakfast. Listen. One good thing, right, that I remember is that everybody, right, that everybody was on my, that on the wing I was on, that had come from Jobs of Prison, they brought us all down together. No one else just brought us all down together. There might be 30 or 40, they brought us all down together. So they knew that we were going to stand for this shit breakfast in the morning, like they give everybody else. They put looks after us, mate. They knew. They knew, they just, I mean, people were going like, nah, you couldn't do that in Wandsworth. Like, listen, we done that in Wandsworth. We done that in Wandsworth. 1978, mate, we done it in Wandsworth. They didn't, listen, they were shitting themselves. They was crapping it. Went up the cells, nice breakfast, you know, goes in the cell, the geese like, I'm in the cell, we can't believe it. Uh, I'm explaining things to him, he understands it. Everybody, I should imagine everybody in the prison knows what's going on. So all of a sudden my door opens up. And I uh, said, so listen, Lee, you've got to come down to the chief. I go, what's up, mate? He said, well, I don't know. You've got to come down here. So they walked me downstairs to the city chief. As I walk in the office, he's gone, what's your number? I said, 131549. He said, what's your name? I said, Rayo. He went, yeah. He said, let me tell you something. He said, just when he jumps up the bus, he said, you trod on my toes. He said, I'm sorry about that, chief. He went, but let me tell you this, right? You're being shipped out today. What guy? What what for? He says, you're seeing shipped out, you're going to the scrubs. I said, well, I don't mind that, it's better for me anyway, it's near one near where I live. I want to get out of Wandsworth anyway. So he's gone, the reason this is the reason this is is because your brother Keith knows my brother, knows my son John. And John works in this prison of Wandsworth. He's, a, he's an electrical engineer, but he's still a screw. 
and he works in here, yeah? And uh, his geezer, this chief's name is Dixie Dean. Dixie Dean and John Dean's his son, obviously so, yeah? So I went, oh, what? If I'd have known that, imagine not, not, not even upsetting this geezer, because he asked my name when I trod on his, his toes, so it, it all of a sudden it's clicked, isn't it? It's clicked. And he's got it straight away, Hill, Ray Hill, he's got it straight away. He's, he's got his, John Dean, he's got his, his son. Do you know Ray Hill? He's gone, yeah, it's my key's brother. And he, Psh, I'm going on. So I've gone now to ones of, uh, to, to the scrubs. Mate, greatest thing I ever did. I loved it. They put me straight in the, uh, into C Wing because it's, you know, and all of a sudden from C Wing I went to D Wing. And anyway, there's a big story about Cliff Field. Anyway, anyway, yeah, yeah. It is about, I think it was about 68 that I met, 78 that I met Cliff, not earlier. And I told you, anyway, so I'm out now. I'm out, I'm out. I get released. Um, I go home. And then, and then a lot of things happen before I go to Lewisham and meet Jimmy Tibbs, Tibbet and all that and get into the street fighting and all this and the other. But a lot happens, yeah. And what happens, uh, Tony Lunch, I think myself, well, I'm out now, I'm going to pop and see Tony Lunch, yeah? So I popped around Tony Lunch's house, and it was like, honestly, it was so nice to see him, and and it wasn't like I expected it to be. He was all over me, hello, mate, he come in. Uh, his wife, Rennie, Rennie, she was such a beautiful woman. She was a really beautiful woman, mate. And, uh, you know, you can understand, he's been in prison such a long time, but she was so beautiful. And she had a young daughter, I think it was uh, named Tony. I can't remember the boy's name, Stephen, I think, I'm quite sure. And it was and it's just nice people, but when I walked in the front room, it was like walking into an armory, mate. There was all guns and knives and all over the wall. It was like, honestly, it was mad. I sat in there, I went, God, fucking hell, Tony. He went, yeah, this is, how it is. this is how I live, yeah? And this is me, this is what I do. And he's talking to me, uh, he's talking to me about um, McVicker because he pissed off with McVicker because McVicker made him look a mug on the film. Made Tony to look simple. And Tony Lawrence, mate, ain't simple. He ain't no simple Simon. Let me tell you this, he's one dangerous, dangerous man. Anybody that can work with that little firm, Richardson's, mate, and uh, do the torturing they did and the enforcing work they did, he was the man, he was the main man. That's why him and Fraser didn't get on. Anyway, um, I'm sitting down talking to him. He said, let's not talk with us. He said, come, let's go out for, for a bit of a ride in the car. So I'm riding in the car with him, going, you know, here and there and having a chat. This is before he's got, I know that he's got hand grenades and hand guns in the car. Hand grenades in the car. I swear, mate, you wouldn't believe this, geezer. So we're driving around and he's talking about, he's talking about some vicar. He said, "Right, well, he's got to go, mate. I, I ain't having that with Vicar Vic saying what he's, listen. Anyway, we had a bit of dinner. Uh, I went, went home, a couple of days time, he phoned me up, I went down the house. And there's Tony outside uh, with a big dustbin. And a big fucking dustbin's come out to shoot, yeah? Pulled it down, pulling all the stuff from the inside out, you know, onto the, onto the pavement. Oh, what's up, Tony? He said, oh, we had a row last night, me and my missus, she's pissed off, I'm pissed off, and I can't blame her, I'm out of order. And uh, she's just chucked all the jury down to shoot everything. Ray, he said, I'm joking, mate, there's falsions in it. And I'm going, do you want hand? He said, yeah. so I'll start giving hands to take this stuff out. And there's jewellery everywhere, mate, diamond rings, there's bracelets, diamond bracelets, chains, there's gold everywhere, yeah. And... Obviously, so uh, there must have been things in there that he couldn't find. You know, you get things that, you know, go in here and go in shit and all that, put it on, put it hands in. Anyway, so he got most of it, I think. Uh, but obviously, he must have left a bit in there. So he's really pissed off, and he? In the room, go upstairs. It's, they've had a fight, but it's all over. And all sweetened, I suppose. He'd give her a white few bob, you know, keep her quiet. Because she's so beautiful, mate. She's just a lovely, lovely woman. You know what I mean? She made me welcome. Uh, so Tony's saying to me, listen, um, let's have a chat. He said, uh, uh, you know, so I said, what's up? He said, no, let's have a chat. So I went and see a guy called Ray Woodwater. Ray Wood was in, down the marketplace and he had a big scrap company. 
uh, when I see him about a bit of business. Tony, him, him had a bit of business. But Tony don't get along. Uh, Tony don't get a, along with a lot of people because he's very. This guy is this into what he was into. His scrap metal, um, the Richardsons, and that was it. Enforcer, dangerous, powerful man. He thought to himself, the less he says, it can't get no, it can't get no worse than that. Yeah. You go, no one can put it on him. But he trusted me so much, yeah. He went, Ray, he said, uh, listen, I've been checking this Vic about, mate. I've been following him every day, you know, and I really wasn't doing bad. He's got to go, Ray. I said, fucking hell, Tony. I said, you know, what do you mean he's got to go? He said, I'm telling you, he's got to go. He went, you're going to come with me, mate, one morning. So I said, yeah, I'll come with you, All right? I said, what are you going to do? He said, don't worry about what I'm going to do. You're going to come with me. I said, all I want you to do, watch, 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 watch out for me. Let me know anybody about I'll be on you. I said, of course, stand us. So every morning, when Vicky lived, he lived near Battersea, uh, Battersea Park. Right? And uh, every morning, he used to run around Battersea Park. Very, very fit. But that's all he was fit. Good, good arm rubber. I mean, he was a proper, proper arm rubber, mate. I mean, you know, a lot of people say that one thing he was was a good arm rubber. He had plenty of arsehole. He couldn't fight. He had plenty of arsehole. A one of a gun, he didn't give a monkey. He'd go straight. He'd be the first one in and the last one out. He, was, he had plenty of bottle. I mean, if you better part from I mean, the fight, he was a complete out-and-out out waste. But it wasn't about fighting. It was about trying. He just wanted to kill him. I ain't joking. So we goes to um, Batsy Park. Listen, mate, let me tell you something. The vicar was so so lucky right, that something happened to the vicar and he was off for a couple of few months, I don't know. But he was ill and moved. He'd done something. Something wasn't right. And Tony Lawrence went there with a 303. You know, the three, bolt action 303, what they use in the army with the big fucking long shells like that, yeah. He had someone in Chelsea Barrett sorted out, yeah. He got his 303, I couldn't believe it, mate, when I see it. And he's got his silence, so it's, uh, this thing on top, this fucking thing on top. And I went, what have I got myself involved in here, you know what I mean? He's hanging around with his 303, out in Battersea Park, walking about behind trees. I'm oh, fucking, it's me looking, it's all these people walking around with their dogs and all that, but not so much in them days, it wasn't so much for that, but today it's crazy, isn't it? But not so much, yeah? And uh, he's there, there, he's 303, clumped down by the tree, waiting for this vicar to come into the park. He's going to kill him, don't worry about that. He's going to kill him. We waited there hour, hour and a half, and we eventually went. Uh, the next day, I went there with him, nothing happened. It didn't happen, it didn't happen, for, it didn't happen. And Tony said something's gone on, it didn't happen, so Tony left it. He thought he might have been on top for him, so he left it. He was in a kill with Vicar, mate. Without a shadow of a doubt, he had a kill with Vicar, eyes are winking. But Vicar was lucky uh, to be walking the streets, mate, or to what he was doing. He was very lucky. Uh, Tony Lawrence was the most dangerous man ever I know. Um, after that, um, I used to go down and see Tony, mate, once or twice a week. And Tony was always out doing bits and pieces, always working, yeah? Whatever he was doing, but he was getting bundles of cash, Tony, yeah? Anyway, um, he asked me uh, one day to come with him to do something, and uh, I was driving by, it, it was by Park, near Park Royal, and uh, it was a van, security van, um, and, mate, it didn't happen, because there was too much around it, it couldn't happen, yeah? But, mate, he, when I got in the <laughs> when I got in the mic with him, he had three hand grenades. Three hand grenades and one of them old guns, Smith and Weston guns, Smith and Weston, Weston gun. He had one of them, yeah. Listen to me tell you, mate. To anybody to ride around with hand grenades in the car, he ain't bothered Tony. He'd have, if the old bill had come and they'd blown them up. He'd have blown them up, mate. I shit myself with anger when he's in the car. I thought, leave up Tony, this is a bit over the top, you know. <laughs> he was, he would have thrown it under the security mode and blew it up, you know what I mean? It was like, I think the anger and were just there for his, 
for his own thing, for old Bill, if they, if they come along, yeah. But that was the last time that I got in the motor to do anything with him, yeah. I wouldn't do nothing with him at all. He had his own little people. He's getting lots of lot of money, and lots of money. I'm not telling you what he did, but he got lots of money, mate. Believe he got lots of money. Um, I was only gutted in a way that my arsehole fell out. Uh, I've got to say, it did fall out when I see the hand grenades. Yeah, I was only gutted, really, because he was earning fortunes. He was getting 200 grand, 300 grand every two weeks, maybe more, doing what he was doing. And I'm telling you something, when I went a couple of times to see things with him, and I'm seeing what he did, I went, God, what? Arsehole. And the guy he was with doing it with, he had more arsehole than Tony. He was in Chelsea with Tony, this geezer, and uh, this geezer was proper, mate. Proper, proper, proper man, you know? Proper fucking man. Anyway, there was a little bit of thing, a little bit of um, animosity between him and Bindon, yeah? Um, Bindon, Bindon was a little bit of a piss taker, right? And Tony Lawrence got to hear about him taking the piss out of him about the McVicker film, yeah? Saying Tony Lawrence is this and Tony Lawrence is that. Tony's telling me, now, um, I've already had trouble with Vic a long time ago, uh, with uh, been a long time ago, yeah, uh, down at the Cromwell Inn with Danny Williams, my mate Danny. No, well, not long, it's long enough, though, for years, you know, anyway. So Tony's going to me, I'm going to do this fucking cunt Binder. Thinks I'm some sort of a wanker, you know what I mean? Saying this and saying that. I said, he, he can have it, you know. I said, he hit me on the chin, knocked me over the <laughs> tone. But I'm not frightened of him, you know, I could have a fight with the geezer. But he's always tooled up to me, you know. You know. He went, why? He went, I'm always tooled up 24-7, mate. Even when I'm on bed, I'm tooled up. Under my pillow, I'm tooled up. You know, I, mean, you know, I know he's got guns over the walls and knives and bayonets and all sorts of things. So we go down to a place called the Gas Club in Fulham. And I've been down there a few times, the Gas Club, with my Danny. Uh, uh, my, my, my Danny and this is before I was with my Danny well before I was with my Danny this is this end of the 70s right before I go to Lewisham to, to, to fight and go down there with, with uh, Lawrence Tony Lawrence and he wants, a, he want, he really wants bins and bed. He walks in the gas club, comes out of the gas club, you ain't hear that cunt, right? And he drives around a few pubs that Bindon uses, around Fulham, Chelsea, and he can't find Bindon. He really wants bins and bed, I'm telling you, he wants Bindon. And he ain't gonna muck about, I'm there anyway, for any help as such, yeah, because he goes Bindon up with beers from other people. Don't forget, don't I'm telling you, that I've already done it out of where we've been there before, and I've been there after all this crap in the 90s with my father in law, uh, Mickey Johnson, when I had Mick, yeah, over, uh, over in Kingston. So, anyway, Bindon's shouting his mouth about, about Tony Lawrence, this, that, and the other, what he is, what he ain't, this crap. So, we go down to the gas club, got a phone call to say Bindon's down there, right? Mate. It's the worst night of my life in every respect, yeah, because it come that close to Tony Lawrence, right, blowing his head off. Honestly, Bindon, I should imagine, Bindon messed his pants, mate. Because I'll tell you what, he was walking like he did. He come out of the fucking place, it's off, yeah. Tony Lawrence has hit him with a baseball bat across the nut. He's gone on the floor. I'm there. He's with a couple of people, uh, Bindon, and they don't, they de really don't want to know because Tony's got an hand thing in his hand, but he's already done, done the other geezer with a baseball bat and he pulls his thing out and he goes on the floor and he sticks his gun in his mouth, a big calibre gun, mate. He sticks it in his mouth, five shot, yeah? He sticks it in his mouth. He pulls that trigger back. Mate, I swear to God, my arsehole went boo, because you know that, you know that you're gonna get a tug for this, you know you're gonna get a tug, it's gonna be a murder charge, and you're gonna get a tug, even though you keep your fucking mouth shut, there's plenty of people there that ain't gonna get their mouth shut. 
So you got all these kids saying, leave it off, let I'm going, shut your fucking mouth, right? Shut your mouth, keep your mouth fucking shut, keep your mouth, I'm big, well, I'm massive, yeah, keep your fucking mouth shut, keep your nose out of it, yeah? You know what I mean? I said, do you want some, you fucking wankers? I'm going into them myself now, I'm really growling at them. But Tony has got his fucking thing in Binder's mouth. Binder is half gone anyway, because he's hit him across the baseball bat, he's not still on the floor. He jumped when he put his thing in his mouth. He pulls that trigger back, mate. I s <sighs> mate, my arse went. I mean, my arse didn't go about him pulling the gun out and putting it in his mouth. My arse went, he's going to pull it and shoot it, you know. I went, and Tony Lawrence, don't drive around with the guns in his car empty. That's why he drove around with hand grenades. Do you know what I mean? So he pulled his thing up, stuck it in his mouth. I swear to God, mate. It's only for the fact that there's a load of people coming out and Tony knew, Tony knew that he, he, he's got a wife, he's got his kids, he's got this, he's got that, and he knows, right, different thing with Vicky, with Vicar, because there's no one else around, only me, and I'm going, boom, anyway, he's got a bolt action he's going to do with Vicar. But Bindon, when he puts that thing in Binner's mouth and he's saying to Binner, what you got to say about me, Binner? He went, nothing time, nothing time, all of my lifetime, I never said nothing, I said nothing. He shit himself, mate, about big time Charlie Potatoes, big gangster, putting out big carving knives and stabbing people, Jack, you know, and uh, what did he do, who did he do down, in, down at the Yacht Club? Uh, what was it, Darty, Johnny Dart, when the Dart, was it, when the Darty stabbed up? Or he didn't stab up, whatever. Anyway, he pulled his, when he pulled his thing out and put it in his mouth and he's talking to him, and you could see Bindon, mate, he was, well, anybody would be the same. I think Bindon must have, must have pulled himself, mate, must have done, because he come so close to Tony Lawrence pulling that trigger. And he said to, he said to Bindon, listen, you see how easy it is for me to get you you're not that clever, Bindon. He said, you shout your mouth about me one more time. He said, next time, you won't even see me. I'll fucking take your head off your shoulders. Do you know what I'm saying, Bindon? Yes, Tony, yes, Tony. Right. You don't say anything about this to anybody. If it comes about, if I hear you shouting your mouth about Bindon, I will come for you, and I've told you what, you won't see me, but I'll blow you off. You understand me? Mate, he pooed his self. I don't think, right, I'm really fit from today, from today, when I see Bindon with my father-in-law, and I'd already have a fight with Bindon, I really don't think Bindon, he was, that's, I don't think Bindon, right, recognised me, recognised me, I don't know, but nothing was said. Binder was ill when I see him in my mother's law's father law's house. He wasn't a uh, big powerful, he was quite weak, look, look frail, you know. Uh, but uh, as I'm saying, uh, anybody that gets a, that sort of thing stuck in their mouth, uh, you know, you, you ain't, what are you going to say, mate? And for Tony Lawrence to say that, he said, listen, if I hear from anybody, he said, don't forget, there's a lot of people, this is why I'm here, put a a gun in your mouth, a lot of people have been telling me what you've been saying, Bindon. So a lot of people have been telling me what you've been saying, a lot of people are going to tell me if you fucking start shouting your mouth about me putting a gun in your mouth. You understand? Yes, Tony, I ain't saying nothing. I said, Tony, he said, no, sorry, he said, Bindon, let me tell you something, mate. I know where you live. I know everything about you. I've mean, done my own work on you. He said, what? He said, do you sort of favour? He said, when I take this gun out of your fucking mouth, stay laid on the floor until I drive off. You understand me? Yes, Tony. He sh mate. And when he, when Tony, me and Tony got in the car and driving off, we look, I looked round and Ben had stood up and you could see Ben and like this. Like that, outside the club. He must have went in the club and had about 20 fucking scotches. You know what I mean? Because he was that close to getting his head blown off. And I was that close to getting myself a life sentence. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. And and then and then 
I mean, and then Tony um, talking to me about the Richardsons and what he used to do with them and how he was, he was called the bear and blowing up pubs and bits and pieces. And uh, driving around with hand grenades in the car and putting a gun in Bindler's mouth was enough for me, yeah? Um, I knew, I knew, <laughs> if I stayed with Tony, uh, I, I, I mean, I come back to planning. I mean, I've done, I've got a big bird after that. I've got my IPP and other bits of birds, yeah? But um, I think if I was true with Tony, uh, I'd be more rich. I'd have been really, really rich because he was earning bundles of dough, believe me. And I knew what he was doing. He was earning fortunes. Uh, he moved. He moved to uh, Brighton. Um, he was with um, the big tall man in Brighton, who owns Brighton, you know. Um, and Tony Lawrence, he was the main man for this man. Yeah, he was the main man uh, for Ushuan. He was the man, man who got people chucked out of their houses. Didn't matter if there's kids, wives, whatever, whatever it is, women with kids. He was the main man to get people chucked out of their houses in Brighton, Tony Lawrence, for Oostrighton. Oostrighton was the most dangerous, one of the most dangerous men you could meet, Oostrighton. He had too much power, too much money. To have Tony Lawrence wrapped around you, you've got to be. He knew Tony Lawrence was the business. When Tony moved from Fulham to Brighton, I think he moved to Brighton, I think Oostrighton, um, Tony was out. Tony used to work with Oostrighton there before. And then Oostrighton, give Tony Lawrence a big property in Brighton. This is what I've been told. Um, he died in Brighton, I think of an heart attack. Um, I, be, I, I was told I don't know how true it was, but I was told from a comment that, and I also heard the little stories because you hear things, not from Bindon, <laughs> not from Bindon, believe me, but um, that someone um, took the mickey out of his son Stephen and Tony went over there and pulled the trigger and blew the kid's head right off. That's the sort of guy Tony Lawrence was. That's the sort of guy that he was really, really dangerous. And he could have a fight on the cobbles, Tony. He could have a fight on the cobbles, but he used to say to me, what's the point? What's the point of getting on the cobbles, having a fight? Because in the end of the day, you might get really hurt and get and lose the fight, he said, the guy that you're fighting might get hurt and lose the fight. He said, one of you's going to come back and shoot one of you, like I did with Nicky Smith. Me and Nicky Smith fought 24-7. We must have had fucking 15, 20 fights, you know, but that's how it is. You know, you've got, got a decent... Tony, Tony said to me, I'd deal with it. I'd deal with it there and then. And this is why the Sullivans um, done Tony, I mean... I think it was Stephen told me that it happened somewhere else. I'm not quite sure, but I'm, I, I don't know. Maybe it didn't happen in Chiswick. It might have happened in Fulham, uh, but it was a scrapyard. Uh, they went to kill Tony, without a shell of doubt. I mean, anybody uh, like Tony Lawrence, um, certified dead, and come up and wake up again. He did. He said it wasn't my time, and got back in his body, and, and that was it. But anyway, um, that's... <laughs> about my mate Tony Lawrence, mate. And when I tried to get hold of him again, um, you know, I wanted to meet him. I wanted to meet him, see how, say, see how he was going. He was going. Um, and they told me that he died of heart attack. Um, but I believe that he was with Oostrighton and back in Brighton. Um, he loved Tony. I mean, anybody that met Tony would love Tony. Uh, he didn't say a lot. Glasses, he didn't say a lot, but you knew that this geezer was fucking dangerous. You know, just some people you can look at, yeah, and know they're dangerous. You know, some people you go, Phew, he's a schizophrenic psychopath, which he was, which he was. But 
if he likes you, he likes you. I never ever spoke out of turn with him, you know that? Never ever spoke out of turn. Not because I was frightened, but I was, <laughs> I didn't put one in mind that. Anyway, um, me and Tony just drifted. I don't know what happened to the vicar. The last time I heard about the vicar was when they found him in a caravan, dead. I mean, it's a shame. Uh, rest in peace, my vicar. Rest in peace in Tony Lawrence, mate, my pal. Uh, you know, but me, I've met so many people in my life, yeah, um, as a gangster, as a con, con or whatever it is, yeah. Through prisons, out of prisons, on the road, on the pavement, doing what you're doing and being an enforcer. Um, I believe uh, that I was one of the best fucking fighters there was at that time. At that time in the in the 70s, the 80s, and the night not so much the 90s, the 80s, 70s and 80s, because I didn't fight, do no fighting in them at that, that time. But 70s and 80s, on the pavement, in the ring, I thought I was one of the best. And I was with one of the best guys could, you could ever meet. Um, you know, I mean, when when um, I finished Tony Lawrence and then I moved to Lewisham, I mean, when I was, spoke to Jimmy Tibbet about Tony Lawrence, Jimmy Tibbet had so much respect for Tony Lawrence. For Jimmy Tibbet to say to me, that Tony Lawrence is one of the most dangerous men he ever knows. That's a dangerous man. And I never said too much to Eddie. I did say, talk to him, mention Tony Lawrence. He looked at me in a funny way, he said, yeah, very dangerous man, Tony. Like, I didn't say anything, that's what I liked about Eddie. Eddie didn't say too much, mate. He never said too much, there wasn't no big stories. That I've just told you about Tony, he just said yes, he was a dangerous man, and that was it, you know. And uh, to me, Eddie Richardson uh, was a very, very uh, proper, proper man, a proper gangster, very, very dangerous, uh, you know, and even Charlie, very dangerous people, mate. And today, I believe they're still as dangerous as it was in them days. It's about who you know, and, you know, well, you know, who you know, innit? But anyway, this is Bang Bang Rail. Just a, a, a little, uh, a little story, uh, to, to, and tomorrow it'd be a bigger one, yeah. So uh, this is Bang Bang Rail. Uh, please press the like button, and subscribe, and good morning, yeah. Nice one.